Welcome back to Barker's Nerf Channel. And yes, it's rugby season and the Springboks are playing and they just made the finals today. Go Barker! So proud of you. Alright, so last time we were looking at this motor cage and the flywheels and the motors and the assembly thereof and I showed you how to go about preparing the cage to fit the motors because you had to do some work on it. We will continue with this now um, and I'll show you how to fit a spanning board. Now th this is a a very underestimated or undervalued item when building blasters. What this does is it simplifies your wiring for your motor case. So you simply just place the spanning board over the cage like that, solder the terminals in and there you go. Simplifies your wiring quite dramatically and it ensures that you don't by accident break one of these terminals off. Ask me, I've done it. It's quite expensive doing that type of thing. All right, so shall we move over to my work desk and let's get to work. Okay, and here we are. So you can see the motor cage as assembled the last time. Flywheels, everything's there. And here's our spanning board and these little spaces. Now, there's no instructions on the site that I could see. So, but I am assuming that these things just go over the motors and then the, mo the little board goes over the spaces. That's how I assume it fits. So um, what you're gonna need to assemble the motors from yarn is going to be a soldering iron like this station that I've got here. Um, let me just switch it on so long. You're going to need some solder and you will need some of this stuff. What's it called again? Ah, I forgot it. Flux. Yes, flux. So you're going to need some flux. Alright, uh, while we're waiting for the solder iron to fit, to, to warm up, Let's have a look at the blaster. Okay. I've worked ahead a little bit and what I have done is I have fitted the wiring as you can see here and I have already fitted the switch as well. Um, sorry about that. I thought I was recording during the, those sessions but it turns out I was not. Um, but in any case, the hardest part is usually the motors. The rest of this is quite easy. The switch that's here, I think I've got a spare. Let me just see. Here you go. Here is the switch that I fitted. Um, it was like that, sorry. So you can see I had to remove some of the plastic support structure to fit this um, let me zoom in for those that want to see a little bit more detail I'm very sorry about this I should have made, confirmed that I was recording okay so for those with a keen eye you will notice that I made a bit of a boo-boo here with the soldering here I actually melted a bit of the of the cage but you can see where the, the, the wiring runs. Um, then the red wires go all the way down to the, to the switch. Um, let me just read to you what it's called again. Uh, da -da -da -da. Here we go. Uh, so this is called a COM, okay? And this one here that it connects to is well, it doesn't say but it that's how it connects so you just follow the same pattern when you do your wiring okay let's get this out of the way all right so how I think this fits is that this simply just pushes over the motors like that I think this protects the motors themselves like that then what happens is the board simply just goes over now something to just to take note of is that the motors are marked with red dots that's where your positives are okay um, I might have mentioned I can't remember if I mentioned in the previous video 
You've got two choices when you're fitting the motors. You can put the red dots next to each other or you can put them opposite each other like this. If you're going to use the spanning board, then the motors have to be fitted like this so that the positives are opposite each other. If you look on the board itself, let's get a bit of zoom here again. If it wants to work, I can't see if it's zooming. Let's try and get some focus maybe. I'll just go up okay so if you look on the board you'll see that it is marked on the board that that's positive and that is positive so this board is made for motors in this configuration where the red dots on opposite ends all right so let's just fit that back Come on. Okay. Obviously be careful now not to damage the terminals when you're fitting this. There you go. Might it might make a bit of a click sound when you fit it. So you can see it's, it's it's a very neat configuration if you fit it like this all right so basically we're going to solder it there and there and there and there just the terminals and then the wiring is going to come in at these locations the positive and the negative there on the board so what that means is that there is no tension from the wires directly on the terminals which is pretty cool Okay, so let's see how the solder are doing. Okay, we've got some heat. Just a bit, a bit of flux here. The flux helps to clean the solder iron and it helps for the solder to stick to it. Um, maybe I should bring in my zoom out again so you guys can see what I'm doing okay so all I'm doing right now is my sponge has got a little bit of water in it and I am simply just putting the flux on and then rubbing it off on the sponge Okay, so that just helps to clean the tip a bit. Okay, let's fit some solder on here. I might have cooled it down too much. Okay, let's zoom in again. And here we go, first terminal. Okay, that should be it. Could probably be a bit bit nicer I don't have a, a solder sucker at this stage uh, I might have to invest in one at some point okay
Okay. You can do this a bit neater. But it's done in any case. Okay, next. that this one actually took okay last terminal remaining There we go. Oh, I'm lying, there's another terminal here. Did that fall off? Let me just quickly check. It did. Came loose a little bit. Okay, so we need, actually we need a bit, put a bit of flux on those terminals. The flux will also help for solder to stick. Okay, so a bit of solder on there. Here we go, take two. if you can see the board is soldered to all the terminals feels quite secure um, it's neat um, and you won't be breaking it off the terminals with the wiring as I have done already in the past all right moving on all right so next uh, we're gonna have to solder the terminal the, the wires onto these two spots on the board um, I just need to clean the wiring, strip the wires quickly. Okay. Might need a little bit more than that. Okay. There we go. Okay, so let's dip these in a bit of sol uh, of flux. Okay. No. So let's get our bearings here. Okay, this is negative and that is positive. So it means the red wire goes in this location and the black wire in that position um, right. hope these wires will be long enough otherwise I'm going to have an issue okay. so the solder, I solder iron is just heating up again back in a bit okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the wire through the board just so that it can there we go and then I'll bring it back up and connect it here okay. 
Is it a bit of a twist? Okay, and now we will just be applying the solder on this location here. Right. Let's see if I can do both wires in one go. Is this cool cool yet? Yes it is. Gonna strip it a bit longer so I've got more wire to work with. Always this one strand of wire that doesn't want to play along. Okay. Go. And we twist these as well. I'm obviously gonna cut them shorter if we don't want to uh, create a short. As I've mentioned, this wire is very thick and it's really very difficult to work with. Okay. Right, so let's just get a, again get some blood to flux on there. So here we go. We'll try negative first again. And then the positive. Okay, let's just leave it a bit for the, the cool. Okay, and I'm back. That should have been enough time now for the wires to cool down. Just want to, don't want to mess around too much with it. Um, let's just fit it into the cage now. Let's get a bit of zoom here so you can see what is going on. Okay. So, Obviously the wires, you need to channel it through the shell like it used to be. Just be, care be very careful with these thicker wires because it does make life more difficult and you can break things off quite easily with them. Alright, so where is that little channel? Hmm. Ah, here we go. So there was this little channel that uh, with the previous wiring, obviously the new wires are way too thick to be in the channel, but I'm still going to use this uh, to secure the wires, well I'm going to try in any case. Um, okay. 
Okay. To get them to go in, there we go. Black at the bottom. Then red. This is probably not going to be a perfect fit, but the important part is that it keeps the wires down. This one is requiring a bit more persuasion. Okay. So as I said, it's not going to be perfect. The wires are thicker, but you can see I have managed to secure the wires. Okay, now to fit the cage, so that we can screw it in. I can feel things are not really wanting to move around at this stage and it's mostly likely due to those thick wires. Okay, it's sort of in place. Now I needed screws. What screws did I use? Hmm, can't remember. Let's try the short ones. That one seems a bit long. Okay, let me try and use my other screwdriver. Might go easier. That should be it. So all that remains now is obviously to, it's basically done, but I've got a bit more that I've got planned for this blaster. So let's just see. Yeah, that fits in nicely. Okay, so let's put some batteries to it and let's just hear the motors roar. Okay. Two normal energizer batteries and for a bit of power two Nightcore IMRs. Okay, these IMRs put out 3.7 volts and the normal energizers 1.5 volt. Alright, and I just want to close that up. 
in case there is an explosion. You never know. Rather be safe than sorry. Okay. Right. Let's press in this uh, switch that um, lets the, bl uh, the blaster think that there is a mag in place and oh where's my rev switch gone oops I have to go look for that okay believe it or not I've actually seem to have lost my rev switch um, but I'll look for it but I think we've basically got enough for this episode in any case so what I'm going to do is I can just pull it back over here and then you can see it working and hear it um, So there you go, you can hear them working. I must say, I do think these IMRs are, are a bit flat because they don't sound as rawish as they usually do. So I will make sure I charge them for next time. So what's up for next time? Um, next time I will be fitting a voltmeter to the blaster. I've already taken the opportunity to glue it to my um, uh, jam door, as you can see here. So the idea is that that will fit over here. I still have to just work out how, how I will be running the wiring. Um, there's, there are some options. The op if I connect the wires directly to the motor cage here, then we will only see the volts in the batteries um, at the time of revving, um, which doesn't really make a lot of sense because you want to see how much volts you've got um, in the voltmeter, uh, in the batteries before you fire so uh, I'll, that means I'll have to run it back down here to them directly to the motors uh, to the batteries but the wiring is a bit short so I'll have to make a plan over there in any case guys uh, I hope you followed and if you've got any questions feel free to ask in the comments um, I'll try and guide you um, yeah up till next time cheers <laughs>